Hi guys, it's Hannah. Uh, so this week I'm wearing the Friday Pattern Company Donny shirt in a Serona linen. Um, it's really nice, I was gonna say for the warmer weather, but it's still raining here, but fingers crossed it gets a little bit warmer soon. Um, so this week we finally had the delivery of the exciting coral sweatshirting. Um, so we've been really busy cutting all of your orders for that. Um, we do have, still have some of it available on the website to buy so get your orders in for that um, if the coral's a little bit too bright for you we do also have the same fabrics in the black ivory and navy with the matching ribbon um, so you can check those out as well um, for pattern recommendations for these so lauren made the jarrah sweatshirt in it from megan nielsen but you could also make the chalk and notch page hoodie or even the tilly the buttons billy which we all think would be great in those so this week as well we've also had a restock of the paper cut patterns including some really cute new kids patterns um, so there's like a sweatshirt a little shirt jacket and then also the mini nova coat um, if you missed it on instagram lauren actually made her daughter sophia one out of this lovely animal print sofa and it's gorgeous so check that out as well so we've had someone ask for recommendations for the Tilling the Buttons Freya top. Um, if you're not sure what this pattern is, it's basically a simple stretch jer um, jersey top. Um, great for layering or just wearing on its own. Um, because spring is supposed to be here, we thought we'd pick out some really nice viscose jerseys. So nice and lightweight. Again, you can wear them underneath things or we picked out some really fun prints so they'd be great on their own. Um, so this one is the River Blue Brushstrokes viscose jersey. Um, I just love blue, so this is like my favourite fabric. Um, and then this one is the Vivid Palms viscose jersey. Very bright, very summery, which would be perfect for the top. Uh, we've also had someone get in touch and ask us for some pattern recommendations for cotton poplins for beginners. Um, first of all, Lauren's got a really good blog on this with some great recommendations for patterns and fabrics, so check that out on the blog. Um, but we've picked out a few here just to show you for now. So the Helen's Closet Ashton tops are really good for beginners and cotton poplin. Very simple shape. Um, but also just really nice to wear with jeans, trousers, anything like that. Um, a couple of simple ones as well are the Celebrated Strata Top. We have just done this as, so, as a sewing society kit and we have got a few kits left, so check those out as well. Um, and also the Tilling the Buttons Stevie Top is an all-round favourite for beginners. You can do it as the top version or even the dress if you wanted to. Um, so that's really nice in the cotton poplin. So I'm going to hand over to Gemma now. Uh, you might recognise the top that she's wearing. We promise it wasn't planned. Thanks Hannah. Yeah, I'm wearing the same Donny shirt in a lighter green. I've gone for the viscose linen. I think it's really nice for the summer, really drapey and lightweight. So we've had a question about one of our new fabric godmother viscose linens. This is the Linnea viscose linen. The question is, is it a directional pattern? And it is. Um, as you can see, the flowers are all going this way towards what I assume is the sun. Um, they're all growing upwards. So yes, it is a directional print. So the importance of a directional print is so you can have all your flowers facing upwards. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples. I think this fabric would be gorgeous in the Avid Seamstress sundress and for this pattern you'd want all your flowers facing upwards for all of these pieces along the front and the back. I also think that this fabric would be really gorgeous in the NYX pattern either the blouse or the dress would look absolutely gorgeous it's got a lovely drape to it so i think it would fit really well so wedding season is almost upon us i know a lot of you will be wanting to make your wedding guest outfits lauren's latest blog goes through all kinds of recommendations about fabrics and patterns that you might want to use so this is the lipstick silk fabric it's got a gorgeous drape and a lovely color i think it's perfect for summer it's nice and bold and it would look absolutely gorgeous as a dress or a blouse. Another lovely bold and drapey choice for a summer wedding outfit. This is the viscose crepe fabric in the violet. It's got a lovely crinkle texture to it. This is actually one of the fabrics we used in the Gladys kit in December. It would look absolutely gorgeous as a dress or a blouse again. Okay, so if you were looking for a bolder choice for your wedding guest outfit, I've got two options for you here. This is the Petal Silhouette Stretch Viscose fabric. It's absolutely lovely. It's very abstract, but very bold for a statement wedding outfit. Now, while I love this one, this one here is my favorite. It's the Disco Blur Viscose Satine, and it has a lovely sheen to it. 
and it also makes a great bold choice for your wedding guest outfit. I particularly liked Lauren's pics of the wrap dresses on her blog. So these two are great choices. My favourite is the Calvin wrap dress by True Bias, but you can also have the LED, which is a lovely choice for if you want that little bit of extra coverage in the hot summer. Another choice is the Shea dress by Chalk and Notch. It's got loads of interesting details, gathered tiers and buttons down the front. It makes a really classic choice in the viscose crepe, or if you want to go with a bolder choice, you can go wild with one of the prints that we've shown you. Hi guys, I'm Becca. Um, so today I am wearing a grain line Hadley top, which is the sleeveless version that I've made. Um, and this is a Blackwood cardigan from Helen's Closet. Um, so we've had a question in about the overlocker and someone saying that when they are overlocking jersey and especially a single layer of jersey, they feel like the fabric is being restricted in the stretch and they can't stretch it as much as they would want to. So we are actually about to post a reel on this so you'll be able to see in the reel um, exactly what I mean. Um, but basically, what you need to adjust here, now in general, I'm not a big fan of adjusting the overlock attention too much because often problems are to do with something else. So I try not to adjust attention too much, but one case where you might need to do it is in this case that this customer's talking about. So basically it's the needle tension here that is probably a little bit too tight for the jersey. So sometimes, especially when you're just doing a single layer of jersey, um, you might find that the overlocking, that the needle tension is a bit tight and therefore you can't stretch it. So you just want to lower those needle tensions, both needles, down slightly and then try again. Try stretching it and see, um, see how that goes. You'll probably find that for a double layer, you might not need to do that. But always test on some scraps first. Can you still stretch the jersey as much as you would want to? So we've had a question from a customer who's sewing up some lightweight stretch denim and they want to know what kind of needle they should use. Should they use a stretch needle, should they use a universal needle or should they even use a denim needle? So basically the reason that you would use a stretch needle is because that's designed for knitted fabrics. Because basically for knitted fabrics, um, so you know things like a cotton jersey very that are really, really stretchy, because they're knitted, they need a needle that's got a slightly ball point end to it so that it can kind of separate the fibres rather than pierce through them as, it's, as the machine is sewing. Because sometimes with knitted fabrics, if you don't use a stretch or a ball point needle, then you can get holes in the seams afterwards. So basically, if, if you're sewing a stretch denim, then this is not a knitted fabric. It's just a woven fabric, but it's got elastane added to it which then gives that little bit of stretch. Obviously, it's nowhere near as stretchy as like a t-shirt, you know, a cotton jersey that you might use for a t-shirt. So basically, um, yeah, you either need to use a universal needle or, or depending on the weight of your fabric, you might want to consider a denim needle as well. If it's, if it's sort of, you know, like a 10 or 11 ounce denim, then maybe you'd want to use um, a specific denim needle, which tend to be heavier weight and just with a slightly different, you know, all needles have slightly different points on the end of them. So yeah, not a stretch needle for that one. Hi everyone, I'm Lorna and this week I am wearing a Tilly in the Buttons Billy sweatshirt. This is the pattern and I chose to do the option with the balloon sleeves. So this is quite apt that I'm wearing this because we've had a question this week from someone who is after some advice about buying cuffing or ribbing for sweatshirts so i'm going to do a little bit of an explanation about the options available so when you're making a sweatshirt that's got different pattern pieces for your neckband cuff and hemband you've basically got three main options of what fabric to use for it so the first option is that you use the same fabric as the main sweater which is what i've done here you do need to make sure that the main fabric does have enough stretch, particularly with the neck band, otherwise you wouldn't be able to get it over your head. So you might need to adjust your pattern pieces slightly, like lengthen it to ensure that it has enough um, movement to get it over your head. A really good option, because it's really stretchy, is either cuffing here, so that's your pre-cut um, packs of cuffing, or your tubular ribbing. 
and I'm going to do a little demonstration to show you how to work out how much you need of those types. So here what I've done is I've got the three pattern pieces. This one is for the cuff, this one for a hem band and this one for a neck band. So if I start off showing about the pre-made cuffing, so this one really you just have to measure your cuffing to the width of your pattern pieces. So this one it says cut two of ribbing so you would need this length for one so if you double it over you would have that amount for two cuffs. So then you need two lengths for the hem band so that's one and two and you can see you've only got a small amount left over so you would need a second packet for your one length of neck band so that's what we generally advise is two packets of the cuffing so the third option is to use this tubular ribbing and what you have to do is just imagine the tube when it's laid out flat and just treat it like it's just one piece of fabric but folded in two. So this is how it comes off the bolt is a tube, but really it's just one piece of fabric and you just imagine that it's folded in half, but you've just got another fold here. So to work out how much of this tubular ribbing, this width is actually 35 centimetres. So even if you're working this out at home, you could just imagine that you've got the width of 35 centimetres. And then what I do is lay out my pattern pieces on here. So again, um, I'm following the grain line. So for my cuffs, I need two of ribbing. So that would be one and then two. So that would take me to there. The neck band, it's too long a pattern piece to fit on the width. So what I'm gonna do is just fold the neck band in half and place it on the fold. So that would take me to there. I only need one neck band. And then again, the width of the hem band, I'm folding it in half. And I need two of these, one for the front hem band, one for the back, both cut on the fold. So that's one and another one here. So then I would measure this length here. And that's for this pattern, that would be 62 centimetres. So I'd probably order 65 centimetres of the tubular ribbing. Of course, when you visit the shop, you can always bring in your pattern pieces and um, lay them out and the staff will be able to um, help you choose the exact amount for you. Hope that helps.